Hello, my name's Donna Porterfield, and I'm Managing Director of Roadside Theater. In 2011, veteran Roadside member Ron Short came to me with an interesting proposal to expand and deepen and establish local reenactment of life on the Daniel Boone Wilderness Trail. His intent was to broaden the reenactment's perspective and help people to understand not just the uh, European role, but the African role, uh, the native role, how all of those different people lived and existed together, and that, you know, helped to shape the country as we realize it today. Ron, who is himself a performer, would work with Eastern Cherokee tradition bearers, the local African American community, and the Daniel Boone Wilderness Trail Association to add the stories of the Native Americans, African slaves, and European indentured servants present on the trail at the time. The project, now in its third year, has turned into a community-wide event with a growing list of partners. The most important partner, however, is... Our own community, people who come to visit and be a part of that. People of all ages, um, people who will come and, and remember, oh yes, my grandpa had a, a blacksmith shop. Oh yes, my mama made hoe cakes the same way, uh, you know, that. And, and then the children will be able to pick up a hammer and, and, and whack a piece of steel. So it's a, it's a it's community-wide partnership. One of those community partners is the Natural Tunnel State Park in Duffield, Virginia, where the Frontier Muster and Trade Fair takes place each spring. I asked Ron... Yeah, what is a muster? Frontier. On the frontier, there was no standing army. So every man uh, from the age of 16 to 50 had to be a part of, this, of the army. It was like a militia. And then every month, at least every month, and sometimes more, they had to come together uh, for drill, for weaponry and so forth. That was what a muster was. They, that was the mustering of the men to come. They had to supply their own uh, weaponry. They had to supply their own food. They had to supply everything. They were the first line of defense. What was once a simple reenactment was reinvented and turned into a day-long drama performed at Natural Tunnel State Park, not on a stage, but outdoors in the reenactment setting that incorporates the landscape and recreates structures from the pre-revolutionary war period. For example, the park's reconstructed blockhouse, the settlers' camp, and a Cherokee settlement. We talked with Megan Crager, education specialist at Natural Tunnel. We're just happy that the uh, Daniel Boone Wilderness Trail Association picked Natural Tunnel to go ahead and put a blockhouse here. And, and if it wasn't uh, for them, we would not have and we would be able to tell um, the story of the this portion of the Wilderness Trail and what's been going on. So we definitely uh, thank them every day for what they have done. And it's just a wonderful program. We can, we're just hoping that we can keep it going and hopefully get some new members and younger members in as well. The fair is already having an impact on the community and the performers themselves. We met up with Lynette Jones, an African-American performer, who told us why she chose to participate and how the project has changed her idea of life on the frontier. I was learning it for the first time myself. I was just floored by the fact that that the Africans were trusted to go ahead, to clear land, build houses and uh, barns. And and I was just floored because, again, that's not a part of history that we often are told in the books, you know, or that anybody has recorded. So that was fascinating for me, learning for the first time myself as well. They didn't come over as slaves. They came over as servants and uh, in the colony, James Colony, and then they found out all the work they could get from them, and guess what they did? That's right, they made them slaves. We was a long way from Jamestown, but we've been here every step of the way, whether they tell you or not. There is very, very little representation of Africans on the frontier. You th- when you, as soon as you think frontier, I mean, I guess most people see Fess Barker on down Boone, you know, as soon as you say the word frontier, uh, there is an envisioning of buckskin men. And so, but there were there were black women, uh, there were black men. Uh, they were encountering uh, Native Americans of 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 
so many tribes that have long vanished. They're gone now, but they were here. They, they were part of that story. Joan Short, president of the Daniel Boone Wilderness Trail Association, shared how her experiences as a teacher motivate her to work toward popularizing local history. Well, I taught for 32 years in the public school system in Big Stone Gap. And one of the things I noticed about the curriculum is that the history of minorities in this area is uh, often overlooked. I had a lot of students who couldn't find their own story in the curriculum Mm -hmm. that we were teaching. And also, I've always been passionate about local history and Appalachian history. And I realized my students did not identify themselves that way because they had no way to learn what that history was. And um, this was such a melting pot uh, before Lewis and Clark even went out to the West. Roadside embraced the Daniel Boone Wilderness Trail project as part of our ongoing exploration of new forms of American theater that aim for the highest artistic quality, welcome an entire community, and help communities develop their own futures. If you are a living representation of that person you're talking about or that period you're talking about, people grasp it in so many dimensions. They can see it. They can smell the smoke. They can taste the food. They can hear a dialogue. uh, uh, They can hear the music. And so uh, you're learning with all the senses, not just the intellectual part. It seemed to me that's what roadside, that's what I've been doing for over 30 years. The fair is set up in a way that gives visitors plenty of time to interact with the reenactors and performers. In English, that's teacher and storyteller. So I went through my naming ceremony many years ago on the O'Connell Lefty River and on the reservation. This is Mark Fincham, a Cherokee reenactor who talked about Cherokee life and culture during this year's fair. Where do you find animals like that? Right here on the Earth's surface. Right? You see my silver? Where'd that come from? Originally, the world below. The feathers represent the world above. Sherry Fincham shared a presentation on Cherokee family balance and environmental consciousness. The, the one thing that if you think about women are associated with things related to life. We give birth, we cook and feed our family, we perpetuate the life of our, of our children. The men are associated with death. They go to war to protect the family, and they kill the meat for the family to eat. So women's work is not demeaning. A lot of people say, oh, that's women's work today. Well, that's not demeaning. That's my honor to provide for my family. Those people over there are wasting wood. They're wasting a natural resource. They, I mean, seriously, they really are. And I know that they may be cooking for a larger crowd, but I can feed a lot of people with my fire and my food here today. We also met up with longtime reenactor Grant Hart and asked him how we got involved in the project as a performer and if he could get in character for us. They wanted the British impression so much that they asked me if I would switch roles for a couple of times here to to let the people know that the Indians many times were instigated and and strengthened in their attacks by the British government. And the British government used Indian agents and superintendents like I'm portraying. That's why I'm wearing part Indian dress Mm-hmm. A part uh, soldier's dress or officer's dress of the, of the army. That helped to associate you with the Indians. He has no authority to buy this land. The Cherokee, as far as I can determine, was led to believe that they were only leasing the land for these people to build forts, perhaps, or to live here or to hunt temporarily. I'm not sure of all of this because I was not present, but one thing I do know, I have a map that I showed these good people here today that shows where the Cherokee lands are. They're settled right on it. And I came here to leave them this message, and I left it well. Even though we had a very tense moment or two, I told them if they did not leave here, most likely it would not be long until warfare would break out between them and not only the Cherokee, but some of the northern tribes like the Shawnees, because Kentucky, that means Meadowland, land, madam. Kentucky is a Shawnee word for Meadowland land because of the big plains there. Anyway, they will be attacked from the north by the Shawnees. They will be attacked from the south by the Cherokee. They will find their lives very difficult to sustain any length of time here. That's why I came here. 
We asked Grant how he prepares for each role. I take a character, or whatever character I portray, I try to look up everything I can on what they did, how they talked, the kind of mannerisms they had, if they were short-tempered, if they were easygoing, or whatever, and I try to put that personality into the character as well as the history that I tell through the, oh, shall we say, through the eyes of the person. Organizers and community members are striving to make the Frontier Muster and Trade Fair a part of culturally-based tourism activities included in a Central Appalachian Community Rebuilding Strategy. Our interviewees stress the importance of history preservation. And especially for kids who live in an area that where negative stereotypes uh, abound, uh, they need to know how proud they need to be of this as the stepping off place because you had to get through the gap in the Cumberland Mountains to, I agree. to go to Kentucky. The Blockhouse, for the length of time it's been here and for the people that participate, I think they've done an amazing job in that length of time of getting uh, people that know history as well as they do and also uh, having the enthusiasm of the community to come out and to make it work. It takes a lot of work to do something like this and it takes dedicated people to do it. And so I think in that way it surpasses some things that I've seen in my life. I've seen places start out that looked like it was really going to be a mecca and the way it was handled are it completely fold just because of the way the uh, politics, as it were, was administered there with how it was run and everything. I would hope that it continues to encourage, especially young families, to see this as a destination spot, to see it very, very specifically. I want to take the kids down there. I want them to see this. I want them to hear these stories. I want them to be a part of this. Something that, that will be like, you know, a, a, a home crafts day kind of thing, where it's a destination spot. We'll be done with the troubles of the world, troubles of the world, troubles of the world. Sooner we'll be done with the troubles of the world. Hey, I'm going home to live with my love. Thank you for listening. For more information about the Daniel Boone Wilderness Trail, visit DanielBooneTrail.com. You can learn more about Roadside's methodology and programs at roadside.org.